Nirbhaya to Shraddha. Has anything really changed? Cases of rapes, violence against women have become mere statistics in India. It seems that as society, we have simply lost our moral values and our conscience just does not cry when we see any kind of act of violence or heinous crimes against women. The way there is a surge in crime against women, it seems that we have accepted it as a part and parcel of our lives. We claim to be living in the 21st century, wherein on one hand, we have women at the helm of political decision making, whether it is administration, armed forces, sports, everywhere they are making a mark. On the contrary, we open the newspaper or social media platforms and see how vulnerable females are in India. Anyone can throw acid on a woman, anyone can make unwanted advances or physically harass her and subject her to domestic abuse. It has also been more than a decade when the soul of each and every individual was stirred due to the brutal Nirbhaya rape case. Heinous would be too small a word to describe the Nirbhaya rape case. The monstrosity of the crime shook not only the country but also put a huge question mark on the safety of women, not only in the national capital but also across the country. Owing to the huge public outrage and the media coverage which Nirbhaya case got, the government did take some steps to ensure that not only crime against women is curbed but the perpetrators of justice are also brought to book at the earliest. Moreover, this is not the only rape case or act of violence against women. There are many more horrendous crimes that have been committed. The need of the hour is to ask ourselves a question whether women are actually safe in our country. Looking at the rise in the number of crimes against women, we need to do some thinking and question ourselves if in actuality our mentality has changed. Are we giving due respect to women which they deserve? What is that is making us treat women as commodities? Using terms like item for females, is it correct? Are we getting too much influenced by some of the most obnoxious content that is being portrayed by Bollywood movies? Moreover, forget about blaming lack of education for one of the main causes of rise in rape and violence cases against women. It is seen that some of the big wits too are involved in cases of sexual harassment and violence and unfortunately they have also got away with it. Why can't a society take up the responsibility of women who is walking alone late at night on a deserted street? On one hand, we are talking about equality between men and women, while on the contrary, we refuse to give women the much needed respect. Forget about women being raped. Today, we are not even leaving a three-month-old or a year-old kid. Due to the widespread public outrage, post the Nirbhaya case, the Indian government took steps to make changes in the laws so that the perpetrators of those who committed such heinous crimes are brought to book at the earliest. Moreover, the objective is also to prevent such crimes from happening again and again. It was on March 21, 2013 that changes were brought about in the anti-rape laws and they were made more stringent. According to the revised anti-rape laws, the Criminal Law Amendment Act of 2013 redefined rape and increased the quantum of punishments, including the death penalty for repeat rape offenders. Unfortunately, despite the new anti-rape laws, little has changed as India witnessed some more similar kind of heinous crimes. Justice J.S. Verma committee suggested increasing imprisonment for rape and death caused by rape to up to 20 years and life for gang rape. Unfortunately, they refrain from suggesting death penalty in such cases. Experts are of the view that the real problem lay with the execution of the laws and in most cases, it was seen that there was lack of empathy on behalf of the police force. The common man was hesitant to approach them owing to lack of trust. Some of the experts have called for swift completion of trial and for the same fast track courts were set up. Also, there was need to show more sensitivity to victims of sexual offence. It seems that as a nation, we just refuse to give due respect to women and our mentality just does not change. 
this is evident from the fact when we look at the some of the most brutal crimes against women. The most recent one being that of Shraddha murder case where she was cut into 35 pieces by her living partner. These are few cases which come into limelight while there are many others that are going unreported. A 26 year old veterinary doctor from Hyderabad was brutally gang raped, murdered and later dumped on the side of a road when two lorry drivers along with their assistants deliberately punctured her vehicle. They pretended to help her and took her to the side of the road and pushed her into the bushes. Owing to public outrage, the Telangana police killed them in an encounter. An eight-year-old girl was abducted, gang raped and murdered. The girl was reportedly missing and the villagers were looking for her when they found her dead body a kilometre distant from the village. It was on 27th May 2014 in Katra village of Banao district, Uttar Pradesh, when two young girls were gang raped and murdered. The case was handed over to the CBI and post the investigation, it was revealed that no rape ever took place and suspects were released. Moreover, the POXO court rejected the CBI close report on 28th October 2015. 22-year-old photojournalist was gang raped by five men, including a juvenile at the Shakti Mills, Mumbai. Three people were sentenced on April 4, 2014, while others were given life imprisonment. In one of the most horrific cases of murder, Aftaf Poonawala killed his living partner Shraddha by first killing her and then cutting her body into 35 parts. The most shocking part was that after killing Shraddha, after threw her body parts in nearby jungles. Also, after confessed about the committing the crime and there was no remorse on his part. Journalist Chitra Subramaniam once mentioned in her essay, You have a problem, I have a committee, with regard to addressing the big issue. Cutting across the party line, some of the politicians have also made extremely insensitive remarks. Few of these comments made by our politicians are Boys are boys, they make mistakes. Rape is a social crime which depends on a man and the woman. It is sometimes right and sometimes wrong. Women should not venture out with men who are not their relatives. Rapes are on the rise because men and women interact with each other more freely now. The sad part is that the mentality of the society as a whole is yet to witness change. In different parts of the country, the police officials continue to act with brazenness and show extreme reluctance to register complaint of cases pertaining to sexual assault and rapes. It is observed that they tend to take the necessary action when either the media intervenes or the victim somehow manages to get senior level officials involved and that too happens if the victim belongs to an affluent family. Post the brutal rape and murder in December 2012, the Indian government had set up the Nirbhaya Fund. The objective of setting up such a fund was to ensure that various schemes are implemented by different states to ensure women's safety and security in public places, as well as one-stop centre for their grievances, a helpline and other measures. The very fact that the fund lies underutilized in most of the states clearly indicates that those in authority are not at all serious about the safety of women. In a report that was published by the Times of India, it was mentioned that only 10% of the sanctioned rupees 461 crore was being used in Tamil Nadu until April 2021. The Orissa Post reported that the state government received rupees 2,532.49 lakh from the Nirbhaya Fund from 2016 till January 2021 end. But that rupees 1,872.42 lakh could not be spent. The National Crime Records Bureau in its report has clearly mentioned that there has been a surge in the rate of crime against women. Number of incidents per 1 lakh population has increased from 56.5% in 2020 to 64.5% in 2021. Crimes against women increased by 15.3% in 2021 as compared to the year 2020. 3,71,503 cases were registered in the year 2020 whereas in the year 2021 4,28,278 cases were registered. 
the number of registered rape cases has increased from 28,046 in the year 2020 to 31,677 in the year 2021. Kidnapping cases have increased from 84,805 in the year 2020 to 1,1707 in the year 2021. The overall crime rate has fallen down from 487.8 in the year 2020 to 445.9 in the year 2021. However, we see this decrease because in the year 2020, there were more cases of violation of COVID-19 rules, which decreased in the year 2021. In the year 2021, the rate of violent crimes was highest in Assam with 76.6 crimes per 1 lakh population. It was followed by Delhi and West Bengal. Whereas in Gujarat, Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu, this rate was minimum. The highest increase in violent crimes was observed in Odisha. Despite all the hue and cry related to women's safety, it is seen that we are living in a society where a godman accused of rape still finds millions of followers. We laud Virat Kohli's century against enemy nation Pakistan as Kohli raped Pakistan. We are a country where consensual sex between two teenagers below 18 years of age is considered rape. It is high time we as a society, as a family, as a country rise to the occasion and take it upon ourselves to protect the dignity of each and every woman. We feel proud when our girls fly fighter jet planes, when they lead the Republic Day Parade. Why is it so that we cannot glorify the accomplishments of such women? Today, we know the Bollywood heroines and we take pride in clicking pictures with them. Why is it not so that we know the names of women who are doing exemplary jobs in armed forces, sports? Though the situation is grim, we cannot give up and all of us need to work together towards bringing positive change. This can only be done by enhancing women's participation in decision-making at all levels, whether at personal or professional level. Educate the girls and boys about the means that needs to be taken to prevent violence. The need of the hour is not to lose hope and work together towards bringing about change.